BBC Radio Cumbria with Kevin Fernyhoe. 11 minutes to 10 the time. One of the positives to come from the floods last week here in the county has been the offer of help, not just from within Cumbria, but from right across the country. Some of that help came in the form of volunteers from a Muslim group keen to assist flood victims here in the county. Dr Aziz Hafiz is from Bingley, West Yorkshire. He's a director for Humanity First. It's a charity of the Muslim community. I'm very, very pleased to say he joins me on the programme this morning. Dr. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi there, Kevin. Thank you very much for having me on. It's lovely to have you with us. Firstly, did groups have trouble getting to Cumbria? I mean, let's just remind ourselves here. Roads and bridges closed. Yes, I mean, these things are always difficult. Uh, Firstly, I uh, represent a charity called Humanity First, which is an international NGO run by the Amdiya Muslim community. And it's the Amdiya Muslim Youth Association that we partnered with that we're working in Cumbria. And yes, these things are always difficult, but it's something that they do day in, day out in terms of helping the local communities. It was a similar challenge in the Somerset floods when the Youth Association was involved. But... Unfortunately, when these disasters happen, uh, you have to pull out all the stops to do whatever you can. Uh, it's a drop in the ocean getting to Cumbria compared to the hassle and the difficulties that the locals are having up there. This was most definitely more than faith, colour or creed. This was Absolutely. helping people in need, and that's what you directly wanted to do, you and your community. Uh, absolutely, and it's an essential tenant of the MD Muslim community, essential part of their faith, which is serving mankind. It's not something that they have an option about. It's an, it's an obligation to assist man whenever there is a need, uh, and it's something we ingrain in them from childhood. What was it like for you, back home there in West Yorkshire, watching the news as it unfolded and, and hearing about the plight of this corner of the world then? I mean, it's clearly, it's very tragic and painful, especially when it's in your own backyard. I mean, yes, Cumbria is where, but it's still, it's, it's home. And it feels a lot more painful when it's in your, in your own own backyard. We see a lot of disasters across the world. Everything is, is relative, be they wars, be that weather-related, be that man-made. But when it's so close to home, uh, you feel it. And with all our work, whether it's home or abroad, uh, you sort of kick into gear straight away. And the Youth Association sort of kicked into action uh, and was visiting regularly straight away, dealing with the local voluntary organisations on the ground just to see how we can help. Uh, and this weekend was, was one of our busiest weekends, actually. We had 60 youngsters out there in, in Cockermouth, in Keswick, in Braithwaite Village, uh, doing all sorts, really, helping with the other local organisations. So it was great that everybody was sort of pulling in and, and working together, really. And what was the, the, the response from different communities within Cumbria that, that you and your team visited. Was the surprise the fact that, hang on, we've got a team here from West Yorkshire bringing in food, supplies, rolling up the sleeves, uh, giving as much in the way of help and support as they can? I mean, the, the teams were actually from across the country. Uh, Leeds, Manchester, Sheffield, Newcastle, Bradford, Hartlepool, Liverpool, York, Glasgow, London. So they, they were literally from across the country. And the response was was very humbling very humbling it's it, it, it although you you're you're working for no reward uh it does bring a tear to your eye uh, when the gratefulness the gratitude on an elderly person when you've just helped remove all the damaged furniture and sofas from their living room uh, you just feel you, you can do a lot lot more mm. really you just feel it's never enough well, I, I think that is a, the sentiment of many, many who've really pulled out all the stops and still feeling, you know, can we do more? What more can we do? We should certainly still be doing something. And, and, and the locals, I mean, in the, the, the command centre at Christchurch in, in Cockermouth, uh, the volunteers from the church was absolutely amazing. Uh, the, they're working flat out. I mean, it's their, it's their locality. They, they live there. It's their flock. It's their local members. Uh, and you really feel feel for them. Uh, and yes, we're there, we're working, yes, we're working very hard, but uh, they're there 24-7. Mm. They're there all the time. As is, stay with me for a moment or two longer. I want to add to our conversation here. One man in Carlisle saw the help that many had received. Indeed, he helped flood victims himself. He rather nonchalantly wrote a Facebook status on how culture, creeds and religions 
really truly doesn't matter when it comes to helping those affected by floods. That Facebook status has been shared over a thousand times and has been liked by nearly 5,000 times more that amount in just a matter of hours. Uh, the man who posted uh, some poetry that we'll be hearing in a moment or two, Brian White from Carlisle. Very good morning to you, Brian. Good morning, Kevin, and good morning, Aziz. Hi, hi there, Brian. Um, it, it's lovely that this morning we get possibly the first chance to, to reflect, looking back to the floods uh, and tell a very, very positive story again this morning. A story that could put smiles on faces here because it, this is a, a heavy splash of irony. Brian, tell us what it was you did with your, with your Facebook status. Um, well, I'd been at the um, the centre in Fusel Street and I'd been booking people in during the day and I was there in two guises. One, I'm a past president of a Rotary Club, Rotary Club of Carlisle South, so I was there with Rotary, but I'm also an officer with the uh, training corps and I'd had my air cadets in the afternoon, so I was there for two and I was listening to stories of people coming through who had some amazing things to say about what had happened to them. But in the next room, giving out aid, giving out food, giving out clothing, were a huge variety of people. And it's, it's you know, there was Muslims, there was, uh, they were discussed that, but there was, you know, people from East Europe, there was people from Scotland, which, you know, they've come over the border to help us. Dumfries had a couple of car clubs come down. It was about this whole of society coming together and actually helping people who were worse off. And it didn't matter what colour, what religion, what your faith was. It was a case of let's knuckle down, let's get in and let's help these people who were suffering. It's one of the, the true positive stories, if, if there is a positive that comes from, from what we've just endured. Somewhat ironic how people have, let's face it, complained about the influx of different cultures, different creeds and religions here in Cumbria and yet it was people from within these different communities who came together who helped helped the city helped different areas of the county Appleby Cockermouth it, it wasn't just the city I, I know that that possibly got a lot of the headlines last week uh, but it was just amazing to see how many many people came and helped uh, that that splash of irony I'm just going to pass to you um, a piece of poetry that has since gone viral. Do you want to do the honours for me, sir? Um, yes, I can. I'm just try trying to find it on the, on the sheet here. It's uh, to the bottom of the page. Right there, the bottom of the page. Um, can I do that? Oh, I think it's on. just. <laughs> I think I got the wrong sheet. Ah, <laughs> that helps. I got the right sheet. I'll have the other sh sheet of paper back for you because I'm going to need that shortly. <laughs> well, I'll change it because the first word I actually write on the wrote on the beginning of this was a little bit more of an ex a gentle expletive. But I, I, I could read it for you, Brian, because it's still stuck in my heart. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to avoid saying the first word to tell you the truth because it's uh, on air. But I'll replace the word with blinking. But it was in quotes. It was a quotation of blinking foreigners coming up to Cumbria with all the donations and supplies. And blinking foreigners driving half the length of the country at their own expense, I hasten to add, helping all the flood victims clear their homes. Blinking foreigners bringing their mobile food vans from miles away and then having the affront to actually give really tasty and enjoyable food to those who don't even have a house, let alone a kitchen to cook it in. And what I was trying to say there was, you know, it's this, it's the irony between the attitude that people have. And I put that in quotes because I, I've heard that from so many people over, the, over time. And that, um, that quote that you, is used as a lever um, for the next part, which is to, to use something negative against it. And the beauty of this was you could say that, that lever part, but the only thing you could actually say against these people, that these people were coming from all over, and it, mm. I, I didn't say any denomination, I didn't say call anything on this, it was purely about people coming in. Mm. They were coming, and the only thing you could say was positive, and that's fantastic. As is, the, the, the irony wasn't lost on you, sir. No, I think Brian, I all credit to him. That was absolutely, it's sort of akin to, it's what summarises our country, really. Uh, we, we are a very resilient nation. We can put a smile to a very tragic situation. Uh, it's just what makes Britain Britain. It just, it's akin to that uh, statement that we heard about from the gentleman during the attack in London that said, you ain't no Muslim, bruv. It just reminds me of exactly the same thing. Mm. That sometimes you, you, you need to put things in a particular angle to give people a reality check as to the, this is what we're really dealing with. We're all human beings. Uh, we're all the same thing. We've just got different colours, shades, hues personalities, geographies, dialects, faiths, uh, but the essence is, is one and the same. And 
we need to realise that not only in the UK but across the world, there's there's too much there's too much evil and there's too much barbarism that's out there to hijack our sort of common humanity. And if we let them hijack it, then we suffer as a whole. But if we can fight it uh, with all these tools, and Brian gives us an amazing tool to fight it, uh, then we are better for it. Aziz, thank you for your time this morning on air. Send our love to the good folk, your community there in West Yorkshire and all of the help they, they provided here in the county last week. Dr Aziz Hafiz is from Bingley in West Yorkshire, uh, Director for Humanity First, a charity of the Muslim community here in our corner of the world with much needed help last week.